I took an Uber here, and uh, I got picked up. It was weird for me, like an F-150. That's not typical. I don't know if Do you know the guy? Because it was... I felt like I was getting picked up for baseball practice. My stepdad was that I didn't, I didn't like the vibe. And then I started talking to him. He was a nice enough guy. For a living, this Uber driver, he's like, I sell oil. I was like, out of the back? Like in barrels? He's like, no, I work with like, yeah, like I work with Chevron in like other countries. I was like, you're an, a literal oil baron. <laughs> and you're driving me around. And what annoyed me wasn't that he did that job. He was like complaining that it was hot out and like the weather was changing. I was like, that's your fault. You're making it hard on everybody. My mom uh, called me today. She was checking on how I was doing. And she was like really depressed for some reason. And she was just unloading all this pessimism. Like, the world's gonna end. I don't like that the heat's changing. You know, I'm trying to do my part and it's so little. And I'm trying to make her feel better. I'm just trying to be, you know, optimistic. I was like, I don't know, you raised like three beautiful boys? Like, you know, I, that's a good thing. She's like, only two of you are hot. And I was like, what? Hold on. Which one? I don't like this. And then she hung up. So, <laughs> didn't get the answer. Now I'm screwed in the head. I'm annoyed. My mom called me because she's selling our uh, childhood home, and uh, it's sold. And it would kind of bum me out, because that's where I jerked off for the first time. You know, that's like, that's like my trauma space. I don't want anyone to have it. Like it. So like a few weeks ago when I found out, I did actually fly home, and I, my plan was to like make it harder for them to sell the house. That was my big plan. So I put on a mustache over my mustache, and then I did like a weird voice, even though my mom wasn't there. It's not like anyone knew me. And I just started saying weird things that I knew happened in the house while I was there so that people were less interested in buying it. And I was like, you know, a little boy lost his virginity in there. That popcorn ceiling really just dried boogers. And I like wanted to say things that made people uncomfortable. I was like, you know, there's an Asian family up the street. Something to think about. Just saying. I got a little annoyed because they like replaced all our family photos to sell a house with like a hotter like mixed race family. It was just like Vin Diesel holding eight puppies. And my plan worked, you guys. We sold the house for way less, and now my mom lives with me. So I don't know. I lose and win. I don't know. I flew here. I, I took a flight from Seattle, and uh, I, I was sitting next to a boomer on the flight, and I knew I was sitting next to a boomer because he was an older guy who was struggling to connect his Bluetooth headphones to his iPad. And so everyone could hear what he was watching, and he was swiping on TikTok with his palms like a psycho, like a drunk baby in the back. Everyone heard his feet. There was like a baby crying. He was very upset. And I was just like, what's the deal with, I'm walking up to the president's been shot. Like it was just all over the place. And I felt very responsible because no one was doing anything about it, but I was like the local millennial. So I had to like think to myself, what would a boomer say to get this boomer to stop doing what he's doing? I have to get down to a boomer's level and talk in his language so that he knows to stop. Maybe you already know what I'm about to say. So I looked at him, I looked both ways and I was like, hey dude, if you keep it up, everyone's going to think you're a gay retard. <laughs> Right away, he's like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. Like, I was just, uh, God, it worked. It was worth it. He owns property, and I don't. I don't like it. I'm, uh, I've been traveling more for comedy, and uh, I was in uh, Buffalo, Wyoming for the first time. And it's a smaller town, it's nice, little salt of the earth. Well, it's bad salt of the earth, you know what I mean? It's just a little. I live in Seattle, it's a little different than what I'm used to, and the people there are very nice, but they're a little more aggressive, a little more assertive. I talked to this guy after the show, he was huge, he was like 6'8", born and raised in Wyoming, and he had this huge flannel, he didn't buy the flannel at H&M, he was born in the flannel, you know what I mean? Huge red beard like a lion's taint, you know what I mean, it was just really aggressive. And he took a bear claw of hand and he put it in my chest, and he was like, my name's Mark, I've been doing construction 35 years. And I was like, whoa, uh, my name is Nick. My pronouns are he, him. <laughs> and I've been scooping ice cream for six weeks, so... Yeah, I don't have calluses on my hands, uh, because I use my hands to make avocado toast, that's what I do. He uses his hands for fracking, I think, that's what he does. It was the softest thing he had touched in a while, so we had hands all night, that's what we did. That was his bitch. And then we kissed, because it was nice. I've been dating ever since.
I like living in Seattle. I think it's fun. I appreciate that the people there try to be woke. The key word is try, because sometimes they don't know what they're doing. Too many honkies, you know what I mean? And it's, it's fun to watch. It's fun. I like how that offended you. I like how... I can say it. I just, I, uh, she's like, oh! I, uh, I was at my first Mariners game this summer. Do you guys root for the Mariners? You guys like... Yeah? yeah. yeah. Mixed reviews. I, I mean, I was fun to watch. It was a cheap game. And when I went, it was uh, Indigenous People's Night. Which is great. I'm glad we're celebrating those people. They had no idea what they were doing though. So to celebrate the indigenous people at the Seattle Mariners game, in front of everybody, like 10,000 people, on the Jumbotron, the camera guy just zoomed in on who he thought was indigenous. That was the whole... It felt more like racial profiling. Like, you know? He was scrambling. He was just like, alright. somebody. He did zoom in on a box of American spirits. It was close. It was close. That made me laugh. I had a trail of tears on my cheek. <laughs> we passed social studies class. It's nice.